Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, depression, I guess. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of like a broader topic, to be honest. Um, you may have heard me mention this in some of my previous videos um, because I recently moved out by myself. So I've been here for about seven months, I think, some, something like that. Um, and uh, well, this is something that I have wanted for a very, very, very long time. Um, it has been um, eye-opening. It's been a, definitely an experience. Um, and there have been a lot of things that have come with it that have been a bit surprising. One of them, of course, is depression. Um, and of course, isolation, feeling very isolated, and that kind of thing. So I kind of just wanted to start off. Um, I have made previous videos, and if you've seen all the videos before this, you know, up to this video, you probably will know what's been going on. I've had some infections. Obviously, whenever I have a big, major life change, thing, things always happen. Um, the last time I moved out, when I moved uh, in with my um, ex-husband, that's when my illness really, really got bad. And that was like almost 10 years ago. So it seems like these big life changes always seem to trigger some kind of issue or immune system problems, health issues, and that kind of thing. Um, so I was always, I was always concerned about that, but I was sort of in a situation where um, I needed to find a place to go and I needed to find a place to go fast. Um, so I had this infection, um, there's a couple of videos on it, I took some antibiotics that were, you know, some antibiotics that are a bit dangerous, um, I think any antibiotic, especially if you have already pre-existing health issues, and especially gut issues, is going to cause a lot of different problems. Um, but I started having these weird bouts of depression, prior to that I was already having issues, feeling very isolated, feeling very um, kind of like stir crazy here in my apartment. Um, I have a studio apartment, so I don't know if that also makes a difference, the fact that it's just like one big room, um, but I was already kind of feeling that stir craziness. So one of the things that I did after, you know, I, I was here for a couple months before I started getting those weird feelings. Um, so I was busy the first couple months, you know, buying things, you know, moving, moving in furniture, you know, arranging, you know, arranging, rearranging. So you're busy the first couple of months. And then once like month, you know, at the end of month two, then month three, then month four, you're just like, okay, now I'm just here every day. And being that I'm disabled and I don't work, I'm literally just here all the time, sort of just kind of floating. It feels like you're just floating in space. Um, so I, I started dating and, uh, that was fun for, you know, maybe a couple months until I got that infection. And I knew once I got that infection that things were going to get bad very, very quickly. And so the medication itself, I think, started triggering even more depression. Um, I, I would take my trash out, come back to my apartment and start crying. I would just be sitting down and randomly just feel the need to just start crying and I, I I was like what is going on like am I is this depression is this a side effect of the medication um, it could be uh, some some medications some of those antibiotics that I was on can have some really bad um, negative side effects for a very long time I'm still dealing with some of the side effects uh, right now so you know, I started having these these episodes and I just kind of would remind myself, look, you know, you are you're dealing with some side effects from some medication, you know, find something to do, find something to distract yourself with. You know, this is you know, this will pass. It will eventually pass. Even if it takes a while, it will eventually pass. Um, but what wasn't going to pass was the fact that I was still living alone. And if you guys don't know, I, I try not to talk too much about my family situation where I was living. I have debated how much I should say or whether I should even talk about it on here. Um, but I know a lot of people, particularly people with chronic illness, deal with a lot of family stuff. Um, for whatever reason, either we come from dysfunctional families or our families just don't 
uh, respond well to our illness. They don't deal with it well. And so, you know, I've, I've talked to different people with chronic illness and they always have the same story of just, my parents don't care. They just, they don't want to talk about this. They don't want to address it. They just kind of want to brush it under the rug. My family was similar. Um, although there were a lot of pre-existing issues before my illness, my illness just made things 10 times worse. And so, you know, when I moved back in with my parents 10 years ago, the day I moved back in, you know, I immediately started looking for a place to go and it took me about nine years to find a place. But I knew that, that you know, I, I had to, I had to at least make the effort to find somewhere else to go because I knew that they didn't want me there. So there was a lot of drama. I went from an environment of very, very high drama, constant conflict. Um, if it wasn't fights with me, it was fights with, you know, between the parents. It was actually only the three of us. When I moved back in, both of my parents were still working. Then my mom retired. Then my dad retired uh, a couple years ago. So once it was the three of us at home, I knew that things were going to get really messy. Then, as I mentioned in a previous video, I think I did a life update. And this was before I actually had moved in here. And I told you guys that my sister and her husband and their dog moved in. So it was a full house. Uh, my sister was pregnant. She now has a baby. Um, they are still living there. And of course, right before I moved out here, things got really, really bad to the point where, you know, we weren't talking. Me and my, my sister and my mom, we had completely stopped talking. So I went from this environment of very, very, very high drama and constant, constant issues to suddenly just being in silence. Uh, just being in total silence all day long and you know and not only just the silence of the drama but silence in general I don't have a tv here um, I can't watch tv and in my in my parents house there's a tv in every single room of the house there's a tv in the kitchen there's a tv in the family room there's tvs in every bedroom there's tvs everywhere and the tv has to be on 24 7 all day long so there's constant noise that iPads, phones, it's just constant noise. And then to suddenly go from that environment to coming to this environment where it's pretty quiet, um, I don't have, um, there, are, there are times when I wanna listen to music um, and I watch YouTube videos and stuff, but I, I am not, you know, I don't have a TV on 24 seven. I, you know, I like a relatively more quiet environment. Sorry for all the burping, by the way. I, my GI issues have been off the charts if you've seen my videos <laughs> you will know that my my GI issues have been you know getting pretty bad lately so I never thought that I would ever say this but the lack of drama seems to to also have caused almost this like um, I want to say almost this like whiplash where I went from constant drama and leaving at the peak of some really really bad drama to suddenly being totally at peace, or, and I don't want to say totally at peace, just to live in total uh, quiet and silence. And I think that also had like a strange, um, like a paradoxical effect where I now feel even more isolated. And, you know, I don't want to say alone. I don't feel alone. I feel isolated. I feel stir crazy. Um, even when things, you know, when things were good, you know, I spent a lot of time in my room. Um, as you guys might know, because I did do a video on this, my dog passed away last year. It's going to be a year, probably by the time you see this video, it's going to be about a year or more since she, she passed. So that was kind of like my constant companion. She was just there in my room, so she was my constant companion. She kept me very busy because she was an elderly dog, so I was constantly having to, you know, take care of her, take her out to the bathroom and all of that. So once she died, that was one thing, one thing less. Um, and I was just always in my bedroom. I was always, always in my bedroom, but there were always people in the house, you know, because my parents were retired. Then my sister moved in with her husband and their dog. So whenever I would kind of need to get, kind of like stand up and walk around for a little bit, I would go to the family room, say some, I don't know, talk to my parents for a little bit. I don't know, you just, and my, my mom is a very big personality, and so she's always talking. She's always making some kind of noise. And so that 
also gives you almost a sense of there's there's things going on, even if it's just one person. Um, so now being here, it's like there's nobody, even to just small talk with, because it's not like I could talk to my parents about like what was going on in my life or my health issues. It was just small talk or just, I don't know, gossip or whatever. And now, you know, all of that is gone. So it's, it's had a very strange, uh, like I said, a paradoxical effect where it's kind of gone the, in the other direction. And, you know, I've been having these weird, you know, these weird bouts of depression. Um, the reason I wanted to do this video today was because today is like, it's very warm outside. It's probably like mid to high 70s. And I went out for a walk today for the first time in weeks. It's been a long time since I've gone out just to go for a walk. Where I was living before, I was living in my parents' house, I went out for a walk every single day. I went out for a walk, for a 40 minute walk every single day. I had my route, I did my walk every day. And so I was at least able to get out. Here, I live in a more urban area. I live in like a downtown area. It's a little bit more complicated. You have to watch out for cars. There's homeless people, there's there's just people in general. Um, there, you know, so it can be a little bit more complicated and, you know, it's just not as convenient. Um, so that has led a lot more to my isolation. Um, you know, there's been other things, other issues. We've been having issues with the car chargers because I have an electric car. They have been, you know, taking their time, you know, activating the car chargers here. And that also too, you know, because I don't have reliable charging, I can't just go places. You know, if I go somewhere, I have to know that when I get there, there's a car charger there. So there's only a couple of places that I've been able to go and it's like the mall, you know? And so that has led to like spending more money. You know, I can't keep spending money like that. So it's almost become this weird, vicious cycle where it's like, well, if I do go out somewhere, it's gotta be to these few places. And then I'm spending money and I can't keep spending money like this. So it just kind of adds on to the stress. So, you know, it's it's just been, you know, very isolating. You know, I've, I have had lots of doctor's appointments. This month, I think I have nothing. My therapist, I think, is on vacation, so I'm not going to see her at all this month. And I see her online, so it's not like I leave my my place to go see her. But I think this month I have nothing. I literally have nothing, no appointments. Um, I had been going out to get vitamin IVs um, to kind of help with sort of to help me bounce back from all the antibiotics that I've that I've done in the past few months. Um, and I was doing like infrared sauna and, you know, red light therapy. And now I've stopped doing that for financial reasons. And, you know, so now I'm just I'm not going to be going anywhere like this is, I think, the first week. In 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 probably, you know over a month where I have nothing. I have nothing lined up. I have no appointments. I have absolutely nothing uh, to go to. And I'm starting to kind of feel, I mean, it's, it's only Tuesday and I'm starting to really feel that already. And it's like, okay, you know, this is, this is going to get serious. So I've been brainstorming and trying to think, you know, one of the issues that I've been having in the last few, you know, I would say probably four to five years now is that I can't read anymore. Like I, I, I've always been a big reader. I love to read. Reading is one of the things that I've just, you know, since I was a kid, I was a, I was a bookworm always. And in the last several years, my focus and my concentration has gotten so bad that I can't even read a book. Um, you know, and it's just become so hard. You know, I, I've I've been listening to audiobooks, but again, it has to be something that really, really captures my attention because if, if it's not, I I'm just, you know, I'm flipping through I'm going through my phone, I'm looking at other things, like I, I'm just completely distracted. So it becomes difficult to find things to do um when you can't focus on anything. And so um you know, and also because of the financial aspect of it, you know, I am now paying, paying rent, you know, I'm on social security, so I'm, I have limited income. Um, things are just getting harder. So it's not like I can, you know, constantly be watching movies. You still have to pay for movies, even if you're watching them at home, you know, I can go to the beach, but then 
the car charging situation and then I have to pay for parking. So all of these different things are sort of leading to anxiety on top of the depression, on top of the isolation. So there are a few things that I have found, um, you know, th that kind of help. I've been watching some movies lately. Um, there is an app called Tubi where you can watch free movies. Um, obviously you're looking at some, you know, very bottom of the barrel types of movies, but for whatever reason, they will have some really, really great movies on there to watch for free. Um, so I've, you know, I've been looking at Tubi, um, you know, paying for some movies, especially if they're movies that I've been really wanting to see for a long time. But again, I'm trying to find things, you know, on a limited income that I can do, you know, from home. Um, I really want to get back into my walks. Um, you know, I could take more trips to the beach, but again, you know, for me, the car situation has been the most pressing right now. And I've been pushing, I've been pushing and pushing, you know, the, the management and people here like, hey, you guys got to get on this. We got to get these chargers up and running because, you know, we had, we had them on for about a week and that was like, I felt so free. <laughs> I felt so free to go, you know, here and there. Um, obviously, eventually I'm going to have to pay, you know, for the charging, um, but that one week was just a week of freedom where I didn't have to worry about, okay, is there going to be a charger at my destination or am I going to be able to find a charger when I get back? Um, so I know that once that's up and running, I will have more freedom to go places and to, to kind of travel around, um, even just explore new places, um, you know, just, just to get out. Um, I listen to podcasts. Again, my focus and concentration has been so bad that even with certain podcasts, I find myself zoning out and not paying attention and sometimes just want, just want to have it on in the background for noise. Um, but, you know, I have to find something that is very, very interesting to me or else I just, I can't focus on it at all. Um, I do go to the swap meet. There is a swap meet close to here that I found and, uh, you know, it's, it's only on Sunday and I do go there. It's not my favorite swap meet that I've gone to, but it is free. And I go there and, you know, at least just walk around on a Sunday and, um, you know, and, and look at stuff. So, you know, swap meets are nice to get out if you can still walk, if you can still kind of move around. Um, Ebooks have been good. There's, I think the Los Angeles County Library has a, um, it's called Hoopla, and you can get ebooks from there. Um, you know, for free, uh, if you can read on your phone. I think they also have audiobooks as well. I think I've, I've, um, I've borrowed a few audiobooks on there to listen to. Um, I got a free trial of Audible for a few months, and so you get one free credit per month. So that's like basically three books that I that I got for free during my trial. Um, and then they do have special offers and stuff like that, you know, for like $5 books and things like that, um, that you can have, you know, just to have something to listen to. Um, so that has kind of been helping so that I don't feel so, you know, so I have something to listen to, something to do. I also have my routine, you know, I do my physical therapy stretches every morning. I've gotten back into that um, now that my legs are feeling a little bit better. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a video on fluoroquinolone toxicity that I made and, you know, my legs were affected by the medication. So I had to stop doing some of my normal routine for a while, and, you know, because of pain. Um, but I've, I've gotten back into that. Um, I really just need to get back into my walking routine. Um, you know, one of the things that I have been sort of pushing myself to get back into is writing and I used to love to write as well when I was a kid I was a very imaginative person you know just had a big imagination and loved to write stories and then I don't know I think you just get older you have other things to do other priorities and you just don't do that anymore and um, lately I've been telling myself write something write write anything write something because you know this is just I, you know, during my illness, I've written on and off and I just, you know, there, there were times where I told myself, write a book, write a book about what you're going through. And I just can't sit and focus long enough to do any of that. I mean, much less, you know, reading is easier than writing and, you know, writing would just be so much of a challenge. 
but I keep pushing myself and telling myself, hey, you need to write something. You need to do, you need to do something more productive with your time. I think that's my issue is that I don't feel productive. And every morning that I wake up, it's just like the same thing repeating. It's like, okay, you should write something today. You got to do this today. You got to do that today. And it's like, I never get it done. And then the next day comes and it's like, okay, you have to do this. You have to do this. You have to do this. So, you know, I understand that a lot of it is, you know, my physical condition, the limitations that I have. Um, also, just having stomach issues all day long. My stomach issues are becoming almost constant, you know, where, you know, every hour, every minute of the day, I'm having a stomach issue. My stomach does not feel well. Um, and so sometimes it's hard to focus on other things. Um, you know, I've been feeling more tired lately as well and just lacking motivation. I really feel like I just lack motivation. I'm not a like self starter kind of person. I can't push myself to do things. I've just basically been like a couch potato. Um, I watch YouTube videos like all day long, um, and that's kind of like my thing, you know, watching YouTube videos. I'm fortunate enough that I found a phone that I could actually watch videos on, but it's also just not, um, you know, it's, it's like there has to be something else. I have to be able to do something else besides sitting and watching YouTube videos all day. So, I mean, those are just a few of my ideas, you know, if you guys are also dealing with this, with this kind of thing. You know, the depression has been just... I don't, I mean, it's not mind numbing yet, but it is really concerning to me because I, I've had depression. I feel like I've had different types of depression, like very severe, acute types of depression, um, kind of like almost an anxiety type of depression where it's just kind of like, um, you know, I, I wake up in a panic in the morning because I have no idea what's, you know, what, where my life is going to go, like just, you know, really scared. Um, but lately it's just been this weird low grade kind of like, you know, the repetition of life, you know, things just being the same day after day. I'm not making any progress in my health. I mean, my health has been getting worse, but it's almost just this like weird lingering kind of worry in the back of my head. And you know it's it's it doesn't help to just sit and worry that's why i tell myself you got to do something with your time almost like i need to create a job for myself like a nine to five while i'm here um and for those of you that are new to my channel i have light sensitivity so it's not like i can be on my computer or on my phone from nine to five i would have to find something else to do that doesn't involve those things that's why I can't work because I can't find a job where I would be able to do those things um, without a computer, without a phone. You know, there, there's no job that exists now where you are not going to be using a computer in, in any capacity. So, you know, it's, it's gotten to that point where it's really, you know, it's just so isolating. Like today, I just had to get out. I had to go for a walk. I told myself it's warm outside. Just go for a 30 minute walk you know, put your headphones on and just, just walk around for a little bit and see how you feel. And it does help. Um, but I think for me, you know, it's isolation, not loneliness. And it's a feeling of being useless. I think that's the other, um, sort of the other element to it is feeling useless, feeling unproductive. And I tell myself, well, you could be doing, you could be writing, you know, you could write a screenplay, you could write a book while you're just there. Like I've had years of just, you know, being being unemployed where I could have written like a novel or something and I never did. I look at the past 10 years and it's like you did nothing for 10 years. You could have been writing a book. You could have been doing doing something productive. And uh, I just I just didn't. So I think that's kind of getting to me that that not being productive, not working towards something I think has been the the hardest part and just waking up every morning to the same thing I mean it's just repetition over and over and over again so I don't know I don't know if you guys are dealing with this as well um, I don't know if people ever get used to being disabled and just being at home um, I didn't I didn't think that I, I would never go back to living with my family like I mean maybe one day I'll have to but I would never choose that. I would never say like, oh, you know, I would rather just go back and live in that situation. This is definitely better than that. Um, 
but I just didn't anticipate how isolating and how repetitive it was going to feel here. And I think a lot of that just comes from being from a dysfunctional family, just the constant high level of, you know, the high volume of drama and stuff that was just always going on there. And then just not, not having that anymore. Just, it's kind of like when you're on the freeway, you're going fast and then you come off the freeway and you're still driving fast because you have to reacclimate to slower driving. So I think that's probably a bigger part of it. But anyways, thank you for joining me. Um, I'm going to try to come back with content. I mean, I've got, I've got the time now, so <laughs> this is another thing that I can do with my time. Um, but yeah, I thank you guys for joining me and I will see you in the next one. Take care.